Welcome to bringing history back to life. I'm Paul. You may be mistaken by thinking I'm doing a video on the mine that's behind me, but I'm not today. This is Bowlby Mine on the North Yorkshire coast. But behind this mine is a beautiful little mine called Grinkle Mine. And that is what we will be doing a video on today. And I shall be bringing you all the history surrounding this mine. So let's get on and have a look. Here we have what I believe to be Ridge Lane abandoned tramway tunnel and you can actually get through. Um, it's actually opened up, a lot of people have opened it up now so I'm going to have a walk through and you're going to come with me. So let's take a look and get the old trusty torch out as well. Well, we're here now inside this old tunnel, the old abandoned tramway. Well, so we're going to take a walk through it and see what's out on the other side. I do believe you can get out on the other side. So the bottom half, as you can see, was made with sandstone and the top half is brickwork and it's uh, definitely a tramway you can actually see <laughs> the old original sleepers look at this this is fantastic bit of history I have no idea what that is if anyone can tell me please And this is what's known as a refuge. And that's at the top you'd stand in it when the trams were coming down this way. So yes, it is definitely confirmed to me that it's a tramway. But I'm so surprised that all of, a lot of the sleepers are still here and intact. Well, not intact, but you know, for us to see. Now I do believe on here, you can even see some of the metal work that held the rail. Wow. There's a better example here. So as you can see there, the rail would sit in there and it would hold the rail. And every so often you would get another refuge and as we can see here, Here's another refuge. This is amazing, this fox. Let's continue to walk through. It's not very often that you walk through a tramway, an old tramway, with the sleepers and the ironwork still intact. As you can see, as we slowly walk past, the ironwork is still here. Wowza. Right, let's get out of here. Wow, we are actually at Grinkle Mine. After a little walk from the Bowlby Mine, um, we finally got here now. 
and we're going to take I'm going to take you down now and show you what is uh, remaining of this mine there's ongoing excavations and it's been ongoing for at least 15 years now but we'll do a little bit of a drone flyover so you can get some aerial shots of what's around here but then we'll go down ourselves and I'll show you some close-up shots Grinkle Mine was owned and operated by Palmer's Shipbuilding and Iron Company. The ore from this mine was transported along a three mile long tramway to the existing loading facility at Port Mulgrave. The mine had a shaft located at the northern side of the railway sidings and a drift entrance on the southern side. After the conversion of the mine from steam to electricity, a Sirocco fan and associated buildings were installed on the site which added improved efficiency in venting gases and introducing air from above ground. The mine worked the main Cleveland seam of ironstone, although the Port Mulgrave quarrying operations worked the Dogger seam. In 1852, Charles Mark Palmer went into business with his brother George and they formed Palmer's Shipbuilding and Iron Company and they had iron works at Jarrow. Now they had to find a source of iron ore, hence why they leased the land around this area and Grinkle Mine was formed. Since 1864, the Palmers had been buying up land around the Staves area and they successfully purchased the land where we are stood now. And in 1875, Grinkle Mine opened. So from 1875 to roughly 1899, Palmers actually owned this company and they then sold it on to, uh, in July of 1899, to the Grinkle Mining Company. But the Grinkle Mining Company still supplied Palmers with the iron ore. At its peak in 1914, there was 479 miners working at Grinkle Mine, 365 below ground and 114 on the surface. Sadly, 23 people lost their lives in this mine. The mine closed its doors in 1930 and was demolished in 1934. When Bowlby Mine was opened in 1969, spoil for the workings there were dumped onto the drift part of Grinkle Mine, effectively burying it and damaging much of the structures that were left behind and derelict. If it wasn't for the hard work of Cleveland Mining Heritage, this site would be lost forever and we would not be seeing what we see today. Thank you very much for watching.